Hi all, right, welcome back to some more Conflict to Heroes uh, Soul Mission 1, Search and Destroy uh, That's a part 2 video uh, I'm just putting together part 1, going to upload that Didn't like it at all <laughs> I suppose um, uh, initially trying to record myself in the frame and whatever It did feel kind of weird um, Thought about redoing it, starting it again, but the footage after that, it ended up, it was about an hour and a half, the video, wasn't it? So, uh, I'm just going to leave it and, uh, yeah, probably make a fool, make it a fool myself a, l a little bit, I think. Uh, it just, it feels, it feels awkward, it's not so bad being this side of the camera. Not that I'm bothered about anybody seeing me, but it just felt a bit weird. Uh, not just that, I think my explanation of this game... Uh, I was pretty poor to be honest. Uh, I might have to put a wee comment in the header maybe just to guide folk to where it actually starts doing something. I don't think I should have went into all that about the all different versions of the game or whatever. I should just play the game and just show you some things. Not, I think I went into it a bit too much. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to just try and do that getting the swing of it now. Um, uh, I'm now I'm using a different piece of software now because I had that Filmic Pro and I think I spoke about the fact that it went to a weekly subscription. You have to pay, I think it's about £2 a week I've been paying for it, which is going to mount up after the months go on and the years go on, you know. So um, this is, oh God, what's it called? Beast Cam, I think. So I think it's a free, well, it's not free. I paid 2 or $3 for it, I think, or 2 or £3. But it's a one-off payment, which was what Filmic Pro was originally. And uh, I'm sure they've, they must have lost a lot of customers. Um, although it was good, and this doesn't look quite as good, but I'm, I'm looking at the zoom, and the zoom's a bit... I'm going to have to get used to it. It's a bit jerky. It's a bit fast, whereas it was a bit smoother than the Filmic Pro. Anyway, so I'm using that just now, so we're going to see... I'm going to have to see what this video turns out at. Um... Uh, the other thing was, I noticed my v video files were awful big. Um, so I'd done a wee test, and this looked like it was doing it a bit smaller. So whether I had some different settings set up. So um, I think I mentioned it, nobody sort of made any complaint about it. But um, they just seem off of big files, you know, multiple gigabyte files. And uh, I know the videos are usually quite long. Uh, Anyway, we'll see how it goes with this one. Uh, okay, let's just get on with the game. Um, now, I made... I noticed one mistake I made already. Um, it didn't matter because the dice roll didn't matter. Um, my attempt to fire on this unit... I think the second attempt to fire on it. I counted the wrong defence value. Um, I counted the... Yeah, see, that's slow there, but I'm trying to make it so... I, I did find a way of setting it so you could just press a button and it zoomed in automatically, but I don't know. Then you would need to be pointing in the right direction, wouldn't you? Anyway, so, um, yeah, when he made a second attack, I think I think I counted the, uh, the 11, and yet he was firing in his front. It should have been the 12. I've already spoke about the fact that these numbers put me off a little bit, but I should know that if I fire at the front, it's going to be easier to hit than it is... Sorry, it's going to be harder to hit than it is if you're firing at the flank. So... Um, I noticed that, I'll put a wee note in the header about that as well, but um, it didn't matter, the dice roll was poor anyway, it didn't make any difference. Um, okay, right, I'm just going to push on then. Uh, was it my turn then? Yeah, it was. I'm just going to move on, and uh, like I like a spoke, we, we've got we've got this card. Is the, is the zoom, or, uh, the focus working? Yeah, it is. Sorry, just, I'm going to be... Obviously testing things out a little bit just now. Um, so we've got this card, so we can actually use a spent unit to make a fire. Um, and obviously the worry is that next next turn, this guy's going to fire on us. So I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to use this card. So it doesn't cost anything. The card is spent, and we can use a spent unit. Now we've no caps left as well to like boost this. So which means it's not going to be brilliant, but I think we need to take the chance and try and get a hit on this, just to, you know, and I, th I don't think I spoke about the fact that you can get a critical hit if you roll four more than the actual value required, and what's that, what that does is eliminate the unit, 
So if I needed like a seven to hit this and I rolled an eleven, it would not just hit it once. It would you would you wouldn't draw a hit marker. You would just eliminate it, and that would be that. So uh, we've no extra caps to use. So I've got a three, but because we're adjacent, when you're adjacent, you get an extra plus three. So that's the three plus three is six. So it's six against, and it is his harder to hit twelve. Uh, however, he is in the heavy woods as well, so he gets a plus two for that. So um, I am six against fourteen. So we do still need an eight to hit. There's no great place to hold dice thing, but I think you need to. It's one of these games where you kind of need to see the dice rolls. So right, so a six. Um, what did I say to a fourteen? So we we need an eight. So here goes. There we go, we got a dice roll at last. So we got rolled a 9, plus a 6, is 15. We needed 14 to hit, so we do have a hit on that unit. So what we do is, against their guys, we randomly draw um, an infantry hit marker from the cup, and we keep it face down. Uh, and that is, it stays like that until, so I'm randomly drawing it, and I can feel the right side. So um, it stays that side down. Uh, now we won't reveal that until this unit tries to do anything or we attempt to fire on that because uh, it could have an effect on what you fire. However, before you reveal it, if I was firing on it, I need to decide if I'm spending caps. I can't wait to see that before I decide if I'm going to spend some caps um, on it. One little rule. Uh, now, I was, this was in... Yeah, I want to check this up. Give me a second. Uh oh, sorry. Oh, what's happened? Ah, oh, damn. Right, hang on. I've not got this set to pause. I've done it earlier as well, but it must have reverted back. Oh, that's going to be annoying. Right, give me a second. No, it is. It's okay. I must have just held my finger down too long and it cut the video there. It is still set to pause, that's okay. Right, um, well, you need to pause. Right, I'll be back in a minute. Ah, uh, yeah, no, I'm going to be, I'm looking for something in this rule book that's not going to be there. Because the rule that I, I came across was, um, and this was the, this is the third edition rules for the base game, not the solo side of the rules. And what I said was, you could go through your attack, you could spend some caps roll the, rolling the dice. Let's just say um, that we were um, attacking a... Let's just say this guy wasn't spent. I won't flip him over to sort of confuse myself. And it was costing four uh, action points to attack. Um, well, once I'd done the attack, let's say I wanted to spend one cap attacking. And I had quite a few caps left. So I wanted to spend one, so I do that, and I reduce, the, uh, sorry, I add one to that three to, to see. And then we, we resolve that, and let's just say we hit the guy. Then we've got to do a spent check on that. Now, in this situation, we don't, because we use, obviously, he's spent, already, he's spent already, and we use the card to do it. But then you would do a spent check on that. And in the third edition rules, it's at that moment that you can decide to spend some caps to reduce this cost. Um, now, I'm just not sure if that would apply to this. So I'm going to say it would, because the thing is, within the second edition rules, um, this wouldn't have applied, because it, it was a different way they'd done it in the second edition to what they're doing in the third. So, but because they've changed that, it's now... A different kind of rule is, I don't know if you're on, if maybe you're grasping what I'm saying here. I mean, before, I would have thought I needed to decide before I attacked if I was paying four or if I wanted to reduce that four to something, you spend caps on it. But I get the impression you can wait until you find the result of the battle before you then decide how much, if you want to spend any caps on that. So if anybody's got any views on that one, um, now, I did, of course, the thing is here, I did say I wasn't going to play with the third edition base rules. I was going to stick with the second edition. Um, but I think that's a rule that we would need to kind of maybe adjust. Because that doesn't exist as such in the second edition. 
Well, hang on though, it does exist in the solo rules of Grant. Okay, maybe there's something in the solo rules that, that does decide that. Give me a second. You know what, rather than me look this up just now, I'm going to have a look into that later on, but if anybody's got any comment on that. Because um, my, my thinking of the game was I would have to decide before I attacked how much that figure, that number was going to be. But going by what I'm looking at now, you could actually decide before you draw the card to see if this was spent, and then you could adjust it after you've actually made the attack and got the attack result, which I was quite surprised about. So um, I might need to find out, out that for sure, how that kind of works with the solo game. Okay, right, that's us had our um, action. So it's over to them. That's right, yeah, because we used the card for it, and that unit was spent anyway. So we've got to draw a card. We're probably going to find out where this hit marker is right away. So the AI draw a card. Okay, right. Now we get an automatic two movement on the time track, on the mission track. So we'll just nip across here, and that means we're going to miss, we're going to skip over the sniper fire. And here was me spent my caps as well, worried about, well, not so much... Well, yeah, cause slightly concerned because uh, the last two games I played of this, I hit this. Because you don't often go. Well, there are some times you will move two on the track, but I suppose it's more likely you're just going to move one. Eh? So we move two, and like I say, because this isn't in a yellow box, we skip on by that, and then st uh, mission track st uh, three doesn't have anything on it. So it just sits there, and obviously it's closer to the end of the mission. But Right, so what have we got in the card? We have um, no um, close combat. However, we do have short range, and again, we would do we do them in this order. We do fire, or we do pivot, or we do rally. Obviously, he, he would fire, but if he's not facing the right direction in short short range, he would then do the pivot. And of course, um, if he couldn't do any of that because he was hit with something, then he would do the rally. But um, well. This is when we need to know what the hit marker is now. So we're going to reveal that because that could determine if he can fire or not. So we need to know this now. And obviously it's just this unit that's in close combat. Eh, uh, sorry, short range. There's no other units in short range. So we don't need to look any further than that. So um, so let's just see what we've got here. Right, cowering. Um, okay. So what that does is it gives a plus two... I'll just turn the guy around so you can see what it, what it's doing. It's giving a plus two to its cost to fire, so it's actually going to cost them five to make a fire. That's its rally attempt number, so it needs an eight or greater. It's got a plus one to its movement value as well, so if I want it to move, it's going to be two. It's only got a range of one. It's reduced to range of one, which means it still can fire. However, it's got a plus one to both its um, defense values, whether it's front or rear, uh, just because it's hunkered down, you know, kind of uh, cowering. So it can fire. Uh, it's got a range of one, which is it's capable of doing. And it, um, and it can fire. So it's going to fire. Uh, it's going to cost it five. So it's more than likely going to be spent after this fire. Um, however, it's no, there's no, you can see there's nothing affecting its fire there. So its fire strength is still two. There's nothing, there would be numbers here to if it was going to affect that. So I'll just put that back under. Um, yeah, I'll remember what it is. So it is going to, it is going to fire at this because that's the first instruction. So it's got um, a firepower of two. And sorry, I'm still saying firepower, but you will notice that all these, all the cards, because I've got the original edition, all this says, that's what I was saying. I, don't, I was saying they didn't, I don't think they'd reprinted this, but they must have done because I'm pretty sure the cards have all got, you know, that they've got, attack on them rather than fire and then you've got firepower see this card here it says highest firepower well that's changed it's highest attack rating i mean they mean the same thing to me i don't i don't think that's going to cause any uh trouble with the way i'm playing it um so it should it should be fine uh so anyway so so this is going to fire and it's firepower or attack rating if you like is two but because it's in close range it gets a plus three so it's five against our 12, because it's firing, firing on our front, and then we're also in the heavy woods as well. So it's five against 14. So needs a nine to hit. Um, 
yeah, that zoom's no nice. I was trying to quickly see if I could adjust it to make it smoother, but I can't seem to can't seem to find a way to do that. Right, so five against fourteen. So he needs a nine to hat. There was no additional caps used or anything like that. Right, so here we go. Oh, right. Didn't like seeing the five at first. Right, so seven. So five, seven's twelve. So that's a miss. He's not hit us. Um, and then because. Well, no, that's him carried out his action. But because he's got the plus two to the cower in, plus two, it means he's going to take a spent check on a five. So that card goes away. And I draw a card to see if he's spent. Oh, he's got, look at that. He's got lucky. The one, the, the only number he could get was a six to keep him fresh, and he's managed to do it. So he stayed fresh, which is kind of annoying because we, we're spent. We've no caps left. We can't do nothing. He's probably going to attack again. Um, yeah, not so good. Um, well, I suppose what we can do is, is have an attack with the other guy, see if we can try and finish him off before he gets the attack back at close range here. Um, because we do have line of sight on this, this is a clear hex in the woods, but it goes, his line of sight gets traced right through the, the spine of the hex. So, yeah, but then again, he's. Because he's getting this plus one here. Um, well, actually, that is a, we're firing his flank there. So we're going to count the 11 there. But it's going to be 11. Plus one is 12. Plus two is 14. And we're only firing with a three. So we would need an 11. So, yeah, I'm of no cap. So I don't really see that being a great move either. Um... So we really need to try and get into short range against this guy, but I mean I could move I could move into here. Yeah, just like the, the, he was that lucky drawing that six, eh? Yeah, if he'd been spent, I would have felt comfortable with doing it. Well let's let's maybe leave that and look elsewhere. Where where else can we look? This this is tough. I mean I could have a, a shot on this guy. We've got a line of sight there. Like I said, the half track it's not really worthwhile. Right, let me just check. That's not gonna that's gonna be fine. Yeah, through there, through there. It doesn't touch that hex, so that's fine. And there's no block blocking line of sight there. So he could have a shot on him. Um and that is gonna be in his flank. So that's actually not a bad shot, actually, when I think about it. So that is, uh, that's four against 11, and he's not in cover. Four against 11, so we'd only need a seven for that. So let's take, let's take that shot on. Four against 11. Um, again, just try to squeeze this in somewhere. Right, so four against 11, need, need a seven. There we go, nine. So remember what I said, four above. So we, and an eleven there would eliminate them outright. But we're we've only got two above the seven, so not quite. But that's that's good enough. That'll do. Uh, so we've got a hat again, and we'll draw another hat marker out the cup again, keeping it face down. So we don't know what that is, and then we've got to have to take a spent check on that guy. Who's uh Oops No oh, I like to have things tidy. It shouldn't really matter with these grant, they're big clunky counters anyway, it's just making more of a meal at. Um so yeah, he he take oh no, he takes a check on a three, it cost him three uh, uh, attack, so here we go. He's drawing a five again, so that's good. So he's staying fresh. Right, so back across to them again. So Again, and we're going to be looking at this guy because he's in short range, but we'll draw the card first. It's not a command card. So again, oh, right, rally's the first instruction then. So that he's not going to fire because he is hit and he can attempt to rally. So it's not an auto rally, it's just a rally attempt. So if we look at this, uh, like I say, he needs a, he needs a nate or greater to, um, to rally. So that's what the instruction is at short range. Like I say, if it said fire first, they would have took the fire on, but it's in rally. So we need an eight or greater. 
and he's got it. Damn. So we've got nine, so that gets removed, and he's back fighting with that. That goes back in the cup. Now, I'm kind of hoping he's going to get spent. Now, a rally attempt is... That's five, isn't it? Is it five? Attempt in a rally. Uh, rally. Five EP costs for each rally attempt. Yeah. So, he spent five EPs. So, we're going to discard that card. We're going to draw to see if he's spent on a five. Right, he's got a one. So, he spent this time. That was a command order card as well. So, this time he flips. And now, it's kind of good because we can make a move this time. Well... Or do we want to try and take advantage of the fact this guy's hit and maybe have a shot at him? Thing is, the longer we wait, a, a blue command card will come up and then he he's going to then fire on that again. So, yeah, you've got to make a decision on something to do, haven't you? Right, I think I will. I think I'm going to move this guy into there. Now, that's going to be a cost of two because I'm moving into heavy woods. So I'm going to take a spent check on a two. I'm kind of hoping this doesn't come up. But, right, got a three, so we're good. So we're still, still fresh. Right, over to him again. Um, draw a card. Right, it's not a blue card. So that's what my worry was there, because then he would fire at one of us. Um, so I'll just lay that down. Right, there's nothing... Nothing close combat, nothing short... Well, the only yeah. short range is here, but this is not a fresh unit, and the fact that it's a green card means it can't be used. So, what are we doing then? We're moving We're moving on this time. Right, I hit AI closest to a unit rally. Oh, well, there we go. Because we've got... Right, that's kind of annoying then, because like I said here, part of my thinking was, shall we try and finish this guy off? Um, and now he's going to uh, attempt to rally us. Hit AI, so he's only hit AI, so you don't really need to check closest to a unit. He's clearly the tar he's clearly the target of the action. Uh, so hit AI closest to a unit rally. So we need to know what his rally is going to be. So we need to flip this. Oh well, he's not going to rally. Right, I did see there's one. I'm pretty sure there's only one of these. So that was good. So this guy was eliminated on that shot. I'll put that killed an action marker back in the cup. I mean, you never know. We might draw it again. So a couple of things happen here. Um, first of all, we've eliminated the unit. We get a victory point. So that flips from German to um, to our guys and uh, to Soviet. And um, what else do we do? Yeah, when when you eliminate a unit. Um, I think this happens all the time throughout the game, isn't it? I think it's a, this is a standard part of the game. What we get to do is... Um, now, one thing I always forget... No, but I'm not doing... I'm not... At the, I'm not... I'm, we're in the middle of his turn, aren't we? Yeah, okay. So that gets eliminated. I'll put that aside. We, we now sit... We flip through these cards until we find a blue command card and we remove that from the game so we just go through these there's there's the next command order card so that gets removed from the game so I'm going to put that across the other side then a little bit more space there and uh, the, only, the only time you wouldn't do it if there's only one card one blue card left in the deck then you don't and then then we shuffle now, hang on, we're still looking through that instruction card, though. Yeah, no, I think that's right, because we're not finished with instructions. So I think we, sh we now shuffle the deck up. So you put the discards in and shuffle up. It's just we've still got this card here, but because of the timing of how that happened. Um, well, hang on, though. Does that just end their... Um, does that end their activation, then? Does it end our turn? Because we revealed that as a killed, and I, I don't think so. I think we need to find some other instruction now. Yeah, I think so. I think we carry on down this card. 
in this case. And there is certain instances where you would um you wouldn't do that and it would be the AI would just that would be their turnover. But I've just got a feeling that this one it's not gonna be that way. So now we've not got any hit AI to try and rally. So we'll go to the next command which is highest firepower AI closest to a hit unit. Uh fire plus one caps. You'll see that it adds a caps on there, that one. Um well there's no any hit units, so it can't carry out that instruction. And then the last one is unhit AI closest to a target move towards. Right. That's gonna be the half track, I think. So unhit AI, well they're all unhit, and there's three of them. Remember this is spent though, so he can't be included. Unhit AI closest to a target. So um, he's one, two, three away, and he's only two away. So it's going to be this guy, and he's going to move, move towards. So he's just going. To, he's going to get closer to this guy. Uh, he can't do it in any other funky way, can he? No, he can either move in here, or here. Now we know he's got bonus moves, and he could come around here, but he needs to get closer to him. Uh, in this instance. And he can get closer where he can move to here, here. In actual fact, he can move to here with his bonus move as well. But what he wants to do is also then try and move into the flank. There's n none of these are defensive modified hexes. So if there was one, he would pick that. So he's going to move. This is closer to the guy's flank than what these two hexes. Well, I suppose this one could be considered also, couldn't it? Um... I suppose it could, eh? Between these two X's. They're both as near to his flank. One is to the other. I mean, I, I think the fact we've got this unit here tells me that he wouldn't want to move into that hex. He would want to move into that one. So, even though I said I wasn't going to use Rule 42... Uh, well, I, I wasn't going <laughs> to... I was going to try and avoid using that. I think here's a case right away because I think going by this we would roll a dice between this hex and this hex but I think it's worthwhile just overriding that one and just saying he's going to move into that hex and face that way so he's he's facing that way whereas if he moved into this hex um, well actually he could still face that way couldn't he and he would get him and him so he would still have both of them in his arc of fire, but yeah, I suppose. I suppose that's true. Well, maybe I should roll between the two. It feels like this is the hex he should be going in, though, isn't it? doesn't it? Yeah, I I don't think it's a huge big deal, but I think if you were if you were playing this yourself, you would move into there rather than there, wouldn't you? So I'm I'm going to just kind of override that one a little bit well override a dice roll anyway and move them into there so that was um the unhit ai closest to a target move towards remember it's not a low risk move towards so he's happy enough doing that so now we're in short range so now this is uh well we we want to do something about that so kind of hoping he's going to get um Caught out, but he only he only spent one movement point there because that was just a straightforward into an open hex. So it's only costing him one. So we're going to draw a card, and he will be spent on one only, and that's a four. So no. So now back to us. Well, decisions. We've got this this over here that could attack, but this is spent, and maybe we should have a go at this because he is in the open, so he's not going to get any extras. We are going to be attacking his 13, though. And remember, we 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 have a zero to the the armor attack rating. Um, we would get a plus three for being short range, but that does mean we need a 10 to hit. Um, so the other the other option could be we we back up we. We kind of like move back, but I found that I'd done that. This was, I think this was the time, the last time I played it, this this guy came across here and he, he kept chasing him down. Eh? And we didn't really get, I didn't really get anywhere, but 
the chances are on a 10 though, aren't they? But if I do leave him there, he's going to fire it on next turn, so... I think I'm, I think I'm going to back up, actually. I think I'm going to back up. So, with backing up, it cost me one to make the actual move. One, because I'm moving into heavy woods. And it also cost me one because I'm reversing. So, it's an actual, it's a check on a three, which isn't great either, is it? I just drew a four card. Um, do I want to do this? I mean, the annoying thing is that if he does fall up, then he's in that hex next turn, and his defence is now up by two because he's in the heavy woods. Do we take a wild attempt at a ten? Because we're, we're, for him to hit us, it'd be, he'd be rolling a six against a fourteen. That's still an eight he's got to hit us. I think I'm going to have a go at it. Is that silly? No, I think I'm going to have a go at it. Because I'm just looking, if we drew a blue card next turn, then the short range would be between this guy and this guy. And I think uh, the priority comes down to highest attack rating or highest firepower. He's only got a two, he's got a three. So it would still be this guy that would make the attack. So... Yeah, let's go for it. So I'm attacking with a 3 against a 13. Which isn't good, is it? Let's give it a go. So we need a, t we need a 10, at least. Uh, right, okay, let's go for it. Nah, well, that's a big no. Yeah, probably wasn't the right call there, was it? It was probably a bit silly. So now we've got to take a check on a three because he made the fire attempt. We do, do, do draw a six, so he stays fresh. So that's good. Right, over to them now. So it's probably going to be this guy. It's not a blue card. So there we have short range instructions are rally at short range or fire at short range or pivot at short range. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't need to rally. It is going to be this guy. doesn't need to rally, but he can fire. He's the only guy at short range that's fresh. Remember, it's a green card, so the other guy can't do it. So, like I say, he's three. Plus three for being um, short range is six against our front strength of 12, but plus two because we're in the woods, heavy woods. So, it's a six against a 14. So, he needs an eight. And he's all the six as well. So, okay. That went okay. So now that card goes away. Now he his attack is only cost two for him to do that. Oh, and by the way, that that white circle means he's got a turret, which means he can actually fire at anything in the three sixty degrees. If he's facing another way, he can still fire. He's got to pay an extra two attack point and um, two action points to do it. Right. So we're going to draw a two. Oh, a, a spent check on a two for him. And we draw a four. There's one of the wee tick symbols, by the way. So, I, I'm not playing with them. And they, I don't get them either. It's just for the player. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to play with them. It'll make it a wee bit harder for us. Um, so, he's still good. So, now we're back in the same position now. Um, do we try it again, you know? I just... I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't see my chances in... Rolling a 10. But again, we're in this position where if they draw a card, even if it's a blue card, it's still going to be this guy that acts. It's not going to be that guy. So I probably should just try it again. So okay, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the same attack. We're gonna attempt uh, an attack and we need a 10 or greater. And that's not good enough either. One more, but <laughs> not. So again, we're doing a spent check on a three. And there he goes. That's a three. I mean, the good thing was it's a blue card. but So he's now spent. Um, so back to them. Draw a card. Right, if AI 
plus units is less than or equal to 10. Move the timer one. Uh, it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got seven units. So this is going to move on one. So the instruction here is auto rally. <clears throat> As the AI action, hit AI closest to unit auto rally even if spent. Oh, that's, that's a good one for them, but they've not got any hit AI. So just double check in the instructions down below. They are space four. If the mission track marker ends in space four, the hit AI closest to the unit will take the auto rally action. So I know, maybe you should push that down and let you read it if you want. Um, the hit AI will take the auto rally action. Once taken, is the player as the player's turn. Ah, okay. So it is worth reading this in. Uh, as the player's turn. If no AI is hit, the AI continues to execute the card order. Right, so if there had been an AI that was hit there, that would have then ended their turn. Uh, they would auto rally and ended their turn. However, that's not the case, unfortunately. So again, close range, he's going to fire it. Eh? So back to the half track situation. And it's going to be the same again. He's got a 6 to our 14. So it needs an 8. Only a 4. Not to be. So again, going to do a spent check. That card goes away. Going to do a spent check on a 2. And he draws a 5. So he's still in the game. Yeah. Right, okay, well, we're going to have to move across to this guy now. Because obviously this guy's spent. We've not got any, any other action. So the attack here is going to be 6. Because I've got 3 plus the 3 is 6. Against his stronger 12. And he's in the heavy wood. So it's 6 against 14. So yeah, it's the same as what the half track had. We need an 8. Um, yeah, that's fine. So we need an 8. Oh dear. Right, that's not anywhere near an 8. <laughs> so, and then we're going to spend check on a 4. Oh, 6 again. So, we got lucky there. Right, back to them. It's going to be the half track again. Right, re reshuffle deck after this action. So, uh, oh, disengage. So, disengage is the first short range action there. Well, that's interesting. I'd be happy for him to disengage. Um... I'm going to have to kind of loop that up. This doesn't seem like he should be doing that, but however, it could just be one of these things. All right, so just looking at the short range instructions here. Uh, I better look at them. I know, wait, a bit more up to date drill book. So, yeah, there we go. I know, wait, not well organized here with my rules, I think. Um, the AI will low risk move this could include moving at the enemy's flank or towards cover the first priority is trying to decrease the AI's risk then moving towards a mission objective example the AI next to a unit could move into that unit's flank while remaining in short range ah yeah okay so well, you can see that is going to improve the situation, and it's not a terrible, it's not a terrible idea, is it, for him? Because at the moment he's firing uh, a six to a uh, fourteen, which if he moves into here, which this is what he's going to do, isn't it? He's getting out of his fire zone. He's moving into cover, and then he's going to be rolling a six against a thirteen, because he's attacking from the flank. So there you go. Um, here was me saying that was a silly thing to do, but it's maybe not that. Uh, now, hold on. There's a prob... Oh, no. It's a low-risk move. You can do it. Yeah, because I was saying they won't do that and spend the... Because it it's going to cost them three action... Sorry, action points. Yeah, action points. It's going to cost them three to move into that because it's plus two for because the fact that he's a tracked unit. Um, so that's that's what disengage. That's what he's going to do. He's going to disengage, which is a low risk move. Just double check that again. Low, the AI will low risk move. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what he's going to do. So he's going to move into here. Now that's a forward movement. So it's one to make the movement. It costs him plus two for an enter in that. And then he's going to... Yeah, he's going to pivot like that when he finishes. So he's got both of these in his... And now he's in this guy's flank. He's out of that guy's firing arc, uh, firing zone, fire zone. So it does cost him. He is going to do a check on a three. Now we are shuffling the deck after this. So, but we'll do the spent check first. So he'll be spent on a three, and he's drew a one. So that's where it failed for him there, because he, because it was costing a bit more to do that action. You know, we'd only cost him two to make the fire action, but ended up cost. Well, he still would have been spent, but at least he would have had the shot. Eh? But he's, you know, you can see he's in a in a better position than he was. He was out in the open there. Not that we had the sort of firepower to do anything about it. But you know, I might have considered. And the thing is, if I could have got this guy up, and we could have done a group attack, which adds you get a plus one towards. Any other units that you've got attacking beside you, sort of thing. It's it's something like that. We'll get we'll get to that, no doubt. So I'm um, reshuffling the deck, and we've done the spent check. Right, what's yeah? I think we could probably get this round finished, couldn't we? Because there's only a couple more. Well, there's three more units that are fresh. So um, yeah, so it's back to us. So what are we gonna do? Um. Yeah, what are we going to do? Uh, right, okay, I've been on pause there a little bit. I think it was my turn though, wasn't it? Yeah, this this guy just moved there. So we kind of got a bit lucky there, really. Right, well, I'm going to have a go at this then. Again, did we already take this fire on? I think we did. So we've got six against 14 again, yeah. So we need an eight. So, um... You know, I mean, the other the other option could be I could move into close combat and then you get an extra. Then I would get seven against. Well, actually, I would get seven against. Ooh, maybe we should. In fact, you know what? Because we would get seven. You get plus four in close combat. And then you get to attack from the flank. You get to consider yourself in the flank. So that would be seven against 13. That's pretty good, isn't it? I mean, it's risky. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Because it's going to cost me one... Plus one. So I'll be checking on a two. So I'm going to move into the hex. And I'm going to turn my face in that way. It doesn't matter your face in, in close combat. I don't believe you. You can still attack. You're all in the same hex, obviously. So... That's me. I'm going to do a spent check on a two. It was just one to move in and one for the woods. So let's draw a card and hope we get away with this one. We do. It's a five. Good stuff. Right. Back over at them. They only have one fresh unit. But remember, they can draw a blue card. Well, yeah. Here we go. Right. No, but the time, the mission track's moving on and on one, but don't mind that so much, to be honest. Just didn't want a blue card there. So it's kind of speeding along a bit. So what are they going to do? Well, they can't carry out any of this because it's a green card and uh, the half track is, is spent. Um, so they can't do any of that. Uh, Counteractions are, if no unit just fired, AI closest to a spent unit move towards. Uh, well, no, we didn't fire because we moved into there. So if no unit fired, AI closest to a spent unit moved towards. Well, this is the only unit that can move because there are two are spent. He's closest to one, two, three away from that. He's one, two, three, four away from that. So this is his target. So AI closest to spent unit moved towards. Um, so he's looking at him, he's actually going to move into there, because that reduces that to two, it's in cover, so he's going to back up into there, which costs one for the move, one for the back up, one for the enter in the, um, 
building. And then he's going to turn his face in. Well, that's good enough, I think, actually. thing is, he won't fire into there, because one of his buddies is in there. But he's got that in his fire zone. That's that's his target, so he's got that in his fire zone. He's keeping that in his fire zone. So that is going to be a check on a three, though, for him. So that card goes away. We check on a three. Oh, he gets away with that. Okay. Uh, right, back to us. Right, we're going to do the close combat now then. So, like I say, we get a plus four now. So it's seven against his 11. But he's got, he still gets the plus two. He's still got the terrain. So seven against 13. So we need a six. Or, even better, a ten. <laughs> right, here we go. Oh, an eight in between. Well, that'll do. That's a hit. Uh, it's a not not a critical hit, but it's a hit. So let's delve in here, shuffle them about a bit. And again, we don't get to see that. So face down. There we go. So that is under um, him. And then we check to see if we're spent on a four again. So we'll draw a card. And that's a six. So I'm drawing some big ones. Um, okay, so back to him. Um, now he's, he's spent though, isn't he? Well, let's draw the card first, Grant, because you never know. It might be a command card. So back to them, we draw. It's not a command card. If AI plus units is less than or equal to four, no. We've still got too many, so it's not going to move on. So we can't... Oh, Well, here we go. Like I just said, there is close range to look at because this guy is in this guy's close range. However, I'm pretty sure... Well, um, uh, yeah, I know for a fact that he can't fire into there because one of his buddies is in there and... When you find a hex at stacked, you, you fire against every unit in there. So, um, what I need is that, I think, yeah. Oh, the more up-to-date version of that, probably. That would be better, yeah. Uh, uh, hang on. Wait till I pause. Wait till I find this. Yeah, so, AI attack eligibility. 5.1, this is page 7 in the rules, I'm like that. An AI will never attack into a CC hex. So this is a CC hex, so he will never he will never attack into that. Because he's clearly going to hit his own unit. Well, maybe hit his own unit. As well as, um, as, well as us. So he, they're just not going to do that. So that means he can't fire... So he's in short range. Fire, pivot, or rally. Well, he doesn't need to rally. He doesn't need to pivot. <sighs> I think we ignore the short range part of that then. I think we have to. Because, he, you know, it's, it, it's different. If, if he was facing that direction, I could say, well, yeah, we'll pivot him towards that. Which, again... Doesn't really help him greatly because he'll you know, still not fire into there. But that's the reason that pivots there. And then obviously, if he was hit, we would carry out the rally. That would work. So I guess we ignore that instruction then because he can't make the fire. He can't. There's no point in him pivot and he can't rally. So we'll execute counteractions as if no unit just fired. Uh, we did fire, didn't we? Yeah, we did fire, so counteractions are not going to work. So what we got? Highest fire per AI closest to a fresh unit fire. Uh, well, we know... That's... No, that's a nothing. That's a nothing, isn't it? Oh, zoom out, Grant. Highest fire... Right, well, closest to a fresh unit fire. We're looking for a fresh unit. This is a fresh unit. And this is a fresh unit. And there's nothing that can fire at it because we know that guy can't fire into there. So that doesn't work. Largest group of mobile AIs closest to a mission objective or unit. Low risk move towards. Um, hang on. Uh, has, this guy's spent, isn't he? 
yeah. So he's only got this one unit. <coughs> Excuse me. Largest group of mobile AIs. And a largest group can be just one unit. In actual fact, he is an actual group at the moment because he's adjacent to that other one, but the other one can't move because he's spent. So, largest group of mobile AI closest to a mission objective. There's no mission objective because this is still German controlled. Or unit. So, closest to a unit, low risk move to orbs. Uh, well, that's that's getting me stumped a little bit. There's always some bits in this game come up, and you think, "Well, how do you decide for this one?" Um, the next instruction is not going to do it, and mission orders are. He's in cover, so probably not going to do anything. It looks like they're going to pass if we don't, if we can't do anything with us. So can he low risk move? He can. I don't think he can, because he he can't move into a fire zone. Wait, oh, hang on. He's already in a fire zone. He can't move into the short range fire zone though. So he's already in a fire zone. So if if he's already in a fire zone, can he move into a non fire zone hex? No, he can't. Uh, can he move into a fire zone hex that has the same or higher DM as a starting AI's hex DM? No, he can't because he's in cover already. He's in a plus one DM hex. Uh, we'll move towards the target's flank if the AI cannot move close. Um, can he move towards the target's flank if the AI cannot move closer? Yeah, I mean, I can only assume that this is the only thing he could do, but he's... Well, it is, it is allowing him to do that. We'll move towards the target's flank if the AI cannot move closer. Well, he can't move closer. He can't move into close combat as well. Uh, at least I don't think he can. No, surely he can't. Yeah. If a warrior moves, the AI will not move into close combat and will not move into opponent's short-range fire zone. So, which means he can't move in there and he can't move in there because that's a short-range fire zone. So yeah, I think the only thing he can do is try and get around this guy's flank so he can move in like that. Which is kind of... Yeah, it's not the best move, but I suppose if he's going to be able to move around, get into the woods next turn, maybe. So that would be a check on one, but he is moving out of defensive hex. But I think, yeah, I think we go with that. I'm going to go with that. So he's going to do, that's him, that's that card done. So that was largest group of mobile AIs closest to a mission objective or unit, a low risk move towards, yeah, that's the best I can get. So it was only a, a check on a one that, yeah. And he draws a four, so he's good. Right, so back to us now. So we're going to try and attempt close combat again on this guy. So, the thing is, if we do eliminate him, it then gives him... Yeah, that's interesting. Why don't we not do that and fire on this guy? We could do that. So we would have a 6 against... Uh, and he's in the open. 6 against a 12. Ooh. We don't know what this hit marker is on this guy down the bottom yet. But then again, we draw a blue card and everything goes... It's just that if we eliminate this guy, then he will attack us next turn. Whereas, if this guy's still in the hex, he won't attack. So that's kind of, that's a wee bit of a, hmm, that's a bit gamey, isn't it, actually? 
It's a bit cheeky trying that one. Um. All right, okay. Um, I won't do that. I'm going to close combat the guy because we could still end up with a blue card. So we're attacking with seven against. Well, we need to, we need to know what this is now. So he's stunned, which means he can't move or fire. He's got, uh, so he can't move or fire, so it's not going to affect our attack. Uh, and we're seven against his 11, but he's in heavy wood. So seven against 13, isn't it? Seven against 13, yeah. Seven against 13, we need the six. So we need the six to take this guy out. Oh, just. Right, okay, that's good. But you see, this is now... What's going to happen now is it's now opened this up. But then again, that means we've taken another unit out. This is going really well, I think. So this guy's eliminated. And what we do... Right, I'm not going to mess this up this time. I'm going to take the spent check first. I'm not quite sure if it matters or not. But we're, we're about to look through for a command card here and remove it from the deck. And then shuffle the deck up. But I do need to take the spent check. So... Uh, my way of thinking is I should do the spent check now. Um, but it's one of the ones that's so easy to forget and you just start looking for a command card and then you shuffle and then you think, oh, I've now got his check for spent. It's this whole thing about random cards as well. It's not a big deal, is it? So I'll check for um, a four here to see if he's spent. Right, so he has. We drew a three. So this guy's spent. That's now going to be a bit of trouble, I think. And then we're going to remove a blue card from... And there it is. So that gets removed from the deck. There's still more more cards in there. I know for a fact that there's not just uh, two of them. But once once you've removed four or five, then you maybe want to think about having a look and make sure. Because there's, there's always, they're always going to have at least one at least one blue card in the deck. Um... And, uh, yeah, I forgot, we get, um, we're going to get a victory point as well. So that puts us up to two for eliminating the, the unit. And, um, yeah, so back over to them. So there's one. Yeah, this, this is going really well, actually. Far better than the, the second attempt I had at it. Um, and the first, at first attempt, to be honest was quite a lot closer than what this is. Okay, um yeah so back to them. So go draw a card. Uh if I plus units is less than equal to four. We've got six units so it's not gonna move. Uh we are gonna have short range fire. Though like I said, if if I'd done it the other way about, then this might not have been happening, but there was risks involved in that as well. So this guy's going to fire, and now he's got a firepower of two, but plus three because it's short range. Um, he is firing at our, our 12 strength defence. Uh, we are getting a plus two for um, in the woods as well. So we got 14, he's got five, five against 14. Uh, so he needs a nine. Yeah, five against fourteen. Needs a nine. Only oh, gets a six, so not happening. Not happening for them. Um, that card goes away. Yeah, they've not drawn any command cards at all, really, have they? That's been the issue here, I think. They've just been. Yeah. So checking on a three. And there he goes as well. That's him spent. So we we want to get this round finished now. Um, I think I might even just pass here. Because I don't want to risk him drawing a blue card and getting another shot. I mean, yeah, I could move this guy up a bit. In fact, he could, help, he could head for this. But the more time I spend doing that, the more time there's a chance of drawing a blue card and then firing. Whereas... If we go on to the new round, everyone gets refreshed. So I think I'll do that. I think I'll pass. Yeah, I, th I think I'll be taking too much of a chance. So I'm going to pass. So it's back to them. Now, they still draw a card here. I mean, the, they could still get a blue card. Right, they've not got a blue card. There's nothing going to move. 
Now, every one of their units is spent, so they have to pass, and that's going to end the round. Because even if you looked at mission orders or that, uh, it's it needs a unit to move, and both their units are spent, so, so it, ne it needed to be a blue card for them to carry on. So that's it. Um, that's the end of the round. So what we do as oops, sorry, I was trying to zoom out, but I'm already zoomed out. We refresh all units. Um, we get our caps back. Now we've not lost any units, so we're going to get our full four caps. Um, we shuffle this deck. And we get to draw another action card, because that was part of the mission instructions, wasn't it? And then the initiative, we need to roll an 8 or greater, but we can spend two caps to modify that to see who gets initiative. And as you can see, it's quite important getting an initiative here, because we've got two short-range situations. So we probably do want to attempt to maybe try and get an issue of um with us right i'll draw i'll draw the card for the turn that we're going to get for me right so it's an automatic rally automatic rally unit you know, even in close combat but it does cost us two either action points or caps and then we get an auto rally so it's not bad i think the command action the one free action is better uh better than that one but there you go uh okay right i'll leave that for now i think we've probably done enough it's going to be over an hour and um, yeah, and I'm just going to put that first video out there now, cringing a little bit about it, but um, just felt like it's a bit messy and whatever, it's not great, but I'm sure I've had plenty of videos that are like that, and, uh, uh, you know, some of the folk that want to watch these have probably got used to that nonsense by now, and whatever, um, and uh, you'll have seen what I look like now, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, right, so i got a couple of uh, day, pretty busy day at work tomorrow, but I'm off Wednesday, Thursday, so hopefully going to try and get some more of this done. Uh, quite keen on keeping this going. Um, yeah, and we'll, well, we'll, we'll see how we get on now. Uh, so when we come back, it's going to be uh, the initiative role, so hopefully I'll remember that, but if not, I can just double check the video. Right, uh, I'll be back when I'm back. Okay, cheers.